there to try to get her off the nest so I can see because I think I hear a baby under her. That really sounded like a baby. You did it, little buddy. You did it. I'm so happy you hatched. This mama needed a baby. Good job. Good job, crazy girl. Now you better take good care of this baby. <laughs> so cute. love showers. Mine do. You love it, don't you, baby girl? Oh, it feels good on this hot summer day. Almost summer. Bill, want more? Oh, I feel good, huh, Bill? Yeah, I feel good. Surprise Bowser isn't over here getting in on this. Oh, that feel good, mama. Well, I don't think she's going to have a litter this breeding. Unless she came back into cycle out of season right before he left. There's just no chance of it now. Not by going by calendar anyway. She sure looks like she was bred. We, we actually saw it happen twice, so not sure what happened there. They're very busy. Busy, busy bees. Speaking of busy bees, I have been a busy bee down here in the lower garden. Got so much hoed. You can't hardly tell, but I did. I hoed all the way up to here on all of these rows and all of those rows have been hoed. It's a lot of work, especially when the ground is so hard and dry. And along this hill, I've put the watermelon seed in. You can see the sweet potatoes are actually coming up really good in this sweet potato experiment that we did. I hoed most of the okra beds. I got about here and gave up. <laughs> Still got to hoe all this. I don't think I'm going to hoe anything in the sweet potato beds. It's just going to be covered in vines soon. And that should hopefully get rid of most of the weeds. I do go in and hand pull any of the morning glory or bindweed that's coming up because those will take over really fast. You see, Miss Elsie has installed a fishing line that goes up every single pole all the way around the garden to keep the deer out idea is if they touch it and they don't see it they get really scared and they bounce back and they can't come in so hoping that that keeps our crop safe so for this experiment because our hose isn't going to reach this far and we don't have an, any guarantee that we're going to get rain my thought of this concept was is if I put seeds down in the deep part and just cover them over enough for them to germinate then anytime it does rain the moisture will be directed right into these trenches watering the corn so i'm going to go ahead and put i've got some glass gem corn which is a popcorn i'm going to put in first and then some other dent corn and feed corns as i go so i'm going to try to get through some of my older seed we'll see what germinates and what doesn't First two rows are glass gem corn. 
from four different sources, so I just poured them all into the same bag. And then the second two rows are this one. So it's very similar. And then I did this popcorn. Oh no, before I did this row, I did Papa Pepper's homegrown popcorn mix. And then and then that black one, the Dakota Black. And then this one in the next two rows. And this one in the last row. So we'll have some variety in here. They might cross-pollinate, but I'm hoping that they don't. Um, but there is, I put like with like. So as I went with the popcorn, I put the popcorn that was the same color next to each other so that if I want to harvest seed off of them, they'll be close to the same type of popcorn. And then as I went further, the popcorn that was darker and darker, and then the dark dent. So I might end up doing some rows on the other side. I have some rows still available that I didn't fill in um, with some of the corn that Miss Elsie likes to grow that she calls field corn. And it's a yellow corn that she likes to make cream corn with. So I might do that or I might come back with some winter squash or melons or stuff that I can just let vine up and go crazy. You know, sometimes I think half the reason why I make these YouTube videos is so that I'll remember what I planted and where I planted it because I have been really not great about labeling my plants lately so I need to get better about it because <laughs> I forget what they are <laughs> and I'll go to harvest I'll be like oh that's a surprise it shouldn't be a surprise Rose you know you planted it but memory issues is definitely something that I still suffer with as one of my symptoms <laughs> so yeah I'm doing good though I'm doing good wow I almost just stripped on the snake don't come any closer Rowan you're gonna spook her you see her no. you see the shiny black oh yeah stop stop snake snake pick up your brother pick up your brother Yes, that's a rat snake. Pick him up. I don't want him trying to get it because he's like snakes. <sighs> I can't see it. I see you really it's it's hold your brother, flower. please. Hold your brother, please. It's Thank you. Bio. Okay. I see it. Yeah, I see it. You see it now? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it move. Don't go close there. Hello, pretty girl. She is holding so still. Look how big she is. She goes off into the blackberry patch. She's giant. Hello, pretty girl. Thank you for coming and taking care of our blackberries. I'm sorry I almost stepped on you and got terrified. I'm not really scared of you. I just got scared of stepping on a snake. All right, guys. The moment you've all been waiting for has arrived. Blackberry season. Oh, you still want that snake. You want one? Hmm. What do you think, guys? Delicious? Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> Mushrooms growing. Mm. Mm. Is it good, Odin? The blackberries are as black as the, the snake. <laughs> you want more? Oh, don't take them all! <laughs> Yo! <laughs> you stinker! <laughs> Kid Justin, get approved. Some people might call it weeds but we call it food this is lamb's quarters it is a beautiful nutritious edible weed you can see right here where I've pinched I'm pinching off the tops to make it bush out and produce more so that we can harvest it and use it in salads and sautés all summer long I grew up eating this stuff on a regular basis and I absolutely love the way it tastes I wanted to pick some of it to give to the mama duck who wouldn't get off the nest with her new baby. And just as I was about to go through the gate and over to the cattle shelter where she's been keeping the baby, I heard peeping behind me. She's actually over here off the nest with the baby. Very glad to see that she's out and about and taking good care of the one little baby she ended up with. The Drake is one proud papa. You did that, honey. That's your baby. 
Yeah, he's going to see her. Where is she? There she is. It's funny, the other Anacona has joined her, acting like a mama. But there's just one baby. Oh, I hope it does well. The other ones are doing really good. We had one casualty the first night. The littlest duckling that seemed to be kind of struggling to walk and stuff was in the nest asleep forever the next morning. But the rest have seemed to be thriving and doing excellent. And our youngest chicks are doing really good out here in the crib rooter. Gonna give them some of that good green stuff. If I can get it through the wire. There we go. Don't be scared of it. It's food. These chicks are available for purchase if anybody is interested. And there are two little quail that hatched in with them. What is that? Oh my goodness. The time has finally come. The moment has finally arrived. We have blushing on our earliest fruit. So it's pretty funny because I've always been the gardener that always warned people not to plant too early. This year I planted on April 9th or 10th and that is about five days earlier than I normally would because our last frost date is considered to be April 15th. But I looked at the 10 day forecast and everything looked great. So I jumped on it. My plants were in four inch pots and they were just ready to get in the ground. As you can see, we have had a lot of growth since then. These cherry tomato plants are taller than me and everything else is doing really great. But it definitely was a big risk. I actually ended up having to cover them for a cold night where it was going to frost. And there was a slight amount of damage on some of those plants where the frost fabric was touching them. So I'm really glad I got the cover on them when I did. Because now I have the earliest tomatoes I've ever had. It is the beginning of June. First week of June and I have a ripe tomato. I am so excited. So I guess sometimes it's good to not play it safe and to take a little risk because these babies are the best tomatoes I think I've ever grown. They're so healthy. This compost in these beds has been amazing for their growth and adding the tomato tone when I did and the rain that we've gotten when we've gotten it has just all worked out so well. So now I get to take some of the cuttings I've started and plant them in the ground for our second crop of tomatoes. That's right, in Georgia we get to succession plant tomatoes. So I'm super excited. I'm gonna make a video all about it for you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.